Hello and welcome to Perspectives. I'm your host, Dr. Roderick Williamson. Our guest on today has managed to combine his love for healthcare and love for pets into a wonderful career that has saved lives in the middle Georgia area. Help me welcome Dr. Terrence Ferguson of Critter Fixer. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Nice to meet you. Listen, I was reading your bio and it said that early as age seven, you decided that you wanted to go into uh, veterinary medicine. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I guess it's not um, any uh, more common than, uncommon than any other child. At a young age, I like animals. Mm -hmm. I had a dog that um, name was Acey, mm -hmm. and he got hit by a car. Well, I assumed he got hit by a car at that time. Now, thinking back, he actually probably, he probably hit the car, but he had a little brush on his nose. And at that time, you know, we all, we run and get the alcohol, we run and get the paper towel, and we try to be doctors. Mm -hmm. So I thought that I had doctored him back to health. And at right. that time, it just, um, was in me that I wanted to become a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I thought animal doctor. Mm -hmm. But by my mother being an educator, she said that if you want to be that, you have to learn what it is, you have to learn how to spell it. So she said it's a veterinarian. Right. And at that time, that was before computers, so we all know what construction paper is. Mm -hmm. So she cut the letters out of construction paper, and at the age of six or seven, she made me learn how to spell veterinarian. Mm -hmm. And since that time, I've always wanted to be a veterinarian and was just blessed to become one. Wow, so how many pets did you have growing up as a child? Um, probably three. We had three dogs. We mostly had dogs. Didn't have any cats or large animals. A lot of people grew up with large animals, but we had dogs. Was there a reason why you didn't have any cats? Um, my mother. It's the reason I didn't have cats. She's allergic to cats, so we didn't have any. Okay. So yes. how did you start your journey from your transition from knowing that you wanted to go into um, veterinary medicine uh, into actually getting there? Yeah. Um, during my high school years, and, and I always hung around animals, mm -hmm. you know, so I tried to learn the husbandry part, you know, how to feed, how to take care of the animals. Um, even graduating from high school, and the big question in the yearbook is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. So veterinary was still there. And that's one of the reasons that I chose to go to Fort Valley State University was because of the veterinary science department. Um, I was choosing between um, Tuskegee University and Fort Valley. And I didn't really want to be at one institution for eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. So I chose Fort Valley because of heritage also. Right. And I majored in veterinary science there. Okay. So are you from the middle Georgia area or are you from? I'm from Talbot County, which is right outside the middle Georgia area. It's near Columbus, if you're not familiar with that. But it's on the other side of Taylor County, between Taylor County and Muskogee County, Columbus. Okay. Okay. So I'm not far away. Okay, great. We're going to take a quick break right there. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You know, when your loved one gets sick, you want the best possible care for them. When we found out our baby Chloe had a tumor, our first and only thought was Critter Fixer. The doctors, the staff, they're wonderful. I mean, she received the best possible care before and after the surgery. The technology is state of the art, and they're always happy to see her. We know she's in good hands. It's no wonder the two locations were voted the best veterinary hospitals in Peach and Houston County. Critter Fixer, where family comes first. Welcome back to Perspectives. Before we went to break, we were talking with Dr. Ferguson on his journey of becoming a veterinarian. Let's continue that conversation on today. You said you went to Fort Valley State University. What, what um, influenced your choice for um, choosing Fort Valley? Uh, one was um, the major that I wanted to major in, which is veterinary science. They are um, one of the few schools to have um, a bachelor's degree in veterinary science. But also, just from a heritage standpoint, my brother graduated from Fort Valley. I have a um, cousin that graduated from Fort Valley. I have, actually have a great, great aunt that graduated from Fort Valley. Um, back near like 1918. Mm -hmm. So there's a long heritage of um, Fort Valley um, graduates in my family, so that's why I chose Fort Valley State University. So you did Fort Valley, then you did Tuskegee, am I correct? C correct, yes. I did four years of uh, undergrad at Fort Valley State University, and there I went to veterinary medical school at Tuskegee University School of Veterinary Medicine. Okay. Now, so your, your medical studies, your classroom studies were really important, um, yes. I assume. Yes. But I'm sure there was some internship that you had to complete as well. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, I was fortunate enough at Fort Valley to uh, participate in uh, summer internship programs. And uh, I worked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, one year I worked in Maryland at uh, Patuxent Wildlife Refuge, which is the only um, wildlife refuge that has a veterinarian on the refuge. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to work there, and I had an opportunity to work with um, endangered species, the sandhill and the whooping crane, mm -hmm. as well as the um, Andean condor. So I got a lot of um, experience there working with other animals besides just the cats and dogs. So tell me a little bit about Alaska. I hear you spent some time there as well. Yes, the following um, summer I worked at um, Kenai Wildlife Refuge, which is actually in Kenai, Alaska, and it's between um, 
It's below Anchorage, Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked there one summer and I actually worked with two departments. I worked with the fishery department and I also worked with the uh, wildlife department mm -hmm. there. Wow. So you were in Alaska, Maryland. What made you come back to little Byron, Georgia? Byron, Georgia. Large Byron, Georgia, let's say Large that. Byron, yeah, Georgia. no, I'm just teasing. Okay. But um, during my studies at Fort Valley State University, I did an internship in Warner Robins at Corker Animal Hospital. Um, so I worked there before I went to veterinary school. Mm -hmm. And once going to veterinary school, I would always come back to this area mm -hmm. to, um, to help, you know, whether it was spring break, whether it was summer break, whether it was Christmas break. And I just found a love for this area. Uh, and when I first got out, I worked one year at Corker Animal Hospital mm -hmm. before my partner and I uh, decided to open our own practices. So we have one here in Byron, and we also have a location in Bonaire. Okay. So earlier, as we're walking through the, the yes. building, um, I didn't see any horses, I didn't see any lions, tigers, and bears. So you specialize in small animals. Yes. Why did you choose to do small animals as uh, opposed to going a different route? I chose small animals based because of my upbringing. Like mm -hmm. I said earlier, you know, I grew up with dogs. Um, in going to Fort Valley, we did dogs, cats, and horses. But my love and my, my passion are more in small animals. Mm -hmm. And you really have to have a passion for large animal if you want to do large animal. And my passion is small animal. A follow-up to that question, you chose to go into private practice as well. You probably could have gone a different avenue. Why yeah. did you choose to do private practice as opposed to some other entity? Um, basically because I can help two people at one, uh, two species at one time. You know, when the animals come in, they don't come in by themselves. Mm -hmm. They come in with owners. Mm -hmm. So once the animal leaves and the animal's healthy, the animal's feeling better, you know, the animal's feeling better, but the owner is also has a smile on their face. So I was able to work with the general public as, as well as work with the animals. So that's why I chose private practice. So as far as being a vet, what do you think, what has been your biggest challenge as far as... Um... The biggest challenge is basically no two cases are the same, mm -hmm. you know. Um, when animals come in, they can't talk. Mm -hmm. You know, the owner comes in and the animal's not feeling well. So we have to basically take up from there and try to figure out what's going on with the animal. You know, uh, does he have a tummy ache? Um, you know, does, is his leg hurting? You know, things like that. So that's a challenge trying so not, to figure not like out. a human, we can tell you, oh, my arm is sore. And that's right. I feel sharp shooting yeah. pain here and there. So. Exactly. And that's, and that's it's funny because uh, when I go into school and talk to the kids, I always ask them, what's the number one difference? Mm -hmm between us going to our doctor as well as the animals coming in, and it's the animals can't talk, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a challenge sometimes trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. So we really have to use our senses a lot. You know, we really have to visualize the animal. Um, we have to put our hands on the animal. You know, we have to even smell, certain smell thing that would clue us into certain um, diagnosis. So there are a lot of things that we have to do to try to figure out. So the challenge is, which also makes it interesting, mm -hmm. you know, it makes you, you know, want to come to work because you're going to see something that day that is not just like the day before. Listen, we have a special guest that we're about to introduce. Let's introduce Bailey to the show. Bailey had a traumatic injury a couple years ago, so Dr. Ferguson's going to tell us all about it, tell us what happened and how he fixed Bailey up, and now she's in really good condition. So Dr. Ferguson, tell us what happened. Yes, Bailey was presented to us um, after being um, hit by a car. Uh, you know, a lot of times these, the dogs get in the road and they get hit by cars. Um, so initially coming in, we had to make sure we took care of any life-threatening injuries, um, bleeding or anything of that nature. But she also, you can kind of recognize in the, in the rear, she only has two hind limbs. And the reason is um, she had so much damage to her rear leg, vascular damage as well as um, neurological damage, that we had to amputate her hind limb. Uh, so she's been doing very well. And it's a little bit different um, than humans. That, the dogs do very well because they're walking on four legs. Right. So they do a lot better with um, three as opposed to us with two. You know, they really never miss a beat. So what's, what's typically the recovery time for uh, a procedure like this? Usually the recovery time for a procedure like this is two or three weeks. You know, the stitches, normally we have um, sutures or staples in there. They normally come out in about 10 days, mm -hmm. seven to 10 days. And once that come out, um, of course, they're on medication for pain, for comfort. So they're comfortable, but usually, they're usually walking around in a couple of days, but as far as the um, total recovery time, you're talking probably two or three weeks. So with the pet, you can, we can expect to see the same type of preoperative um, procedures, same operative procedures and post-operative management as we would see in yes, a human Yes, as in human medicine, that's right. Um, use the same thing, and, it, and it's funny, a lot of times we talk anesthesia with the clients, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing that we use when we go to the hospital, so right. they're kind of amazed by that, as well as some of the disease, diseases that they get also. They're, a lot of times they're amazed by what we do to treat animals here as opposed to when they've gone to the doctor. Now let me ask this question. When we get a limb amputated, say yes. a low knee or, or AKA, mm -hmm. then there's oftentimes a need for a prosthesis. Yes. Do you see that in the pet population at all? 
we, we don't see it as common, um, but there are um, accounts of them getting prosthetic limbs mm -hmm. if they have to have more than one limb removed. Mm -hmm. They do well enough on three limbs that they do fine, but if they have to have more than one limb removed, then they have difficulty being mobile. Mm -hmm. And in that case, there are um, prosthetic limbs that they can get. Usually, if it's a procedure like that, it's usually something that we refer to a teaching hospital mm -hmm. because it's something that the orthopedic there has done several times, so it, it's a little better right. there. Now, is there a need for some type of physical therapy or re-educating of the it, it, it depends on the injury. Mm -hmm. um, usually not with the um, amputation, mm -hmm. but we um, do a lot of um, cruciate ACL tears, mm -hmm. cruciate ligaments, where we have to go in and repair the joints. Mm -hmm. In that case, there's a lot of therapy involved because mm -hmm. a lot of time what the animals want to do is, let's say for instance, they have a hind limb um, ACL tear mm -hmm. and we repair it. Well, what they want to do after surgery is basically hold it up because they can get around fine on the three legs. Right. So we have to do therapy to assure them that that leg is sound mm -hmm. um, and do some therapy so they'll start back using it. Okay. Yes. Um, while we have Bailey here, let's go over some, um, some helpful tips um, as far as grooming and as far as just proper pet health. Do you have any recommendations for the viewers on today? Sure, and it's kind of age related. Um, we'll, we'll say Bailey's a puppy mm -hmm. for our practical purposes here. Um, normal, the normal vaccine uh, regimen for, for puppies are we like to start them at six weeks old mm -hmm. for, for getting their first vaccine. Mm -hmm. And basically what they're getting is they're getting vaccinated for um, viral diseases that, that they can get as puppies. Mm -hmm. When they're born, they have antibodies or protection from the mother, mm -hmm. from the milk. And that normally lasts anywhere from four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. When that starts weaning down is when we have to start um, vaccinating them exogenously. Okay, we have to give it externally. So once we give that, it. yeah, once we get that, it lasts about three weeks. And they get it every three weeks until they get about uh, 14 to 16 mm -hmm. weeks old. Then it's just a yearly thing. Mm -hmm. Um, also at that time, we're also checking for other things like intestinal worms, like we hear people take worms, hook worms and round worms. They have to get um, tested for that and vaccinated for that also. One important thing here in the South is um, heartworms. Mm -hmm. And what heartworms are, they're worms that reside in the vascular system and the heart. Mm -hmm. And the way they're transmitted from dog to dog or cat to cat is by the bite of mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. The mosquito bites a dog. Um, that has heartworms, mm -hmm. it picks up a larva. Mm -hmm. That larva um, uh, molts until it gets to what we call an L3 larva. And the mosquito bites another dog and deposits it. Mm -hmm. And that um, continues to grow until it becomes an adult worm. And once it becomes an adult heartworm, it can cause a lot of damage in the dog. The good thing about it is we have a preventative. Mm -hmm. There's a pill that the dog gets once a month for its life that will prevent them from getting heartworms. Okay. Now, as far as um, nutritional, um, yes information. Um, I've heard that it's best to to give your dog uh, dry dog food as opposed to the canned dog food and, and yeah. can you dispel some yeah. of those myths if in fact <clears throat> that's a myth? Um, I would prefer dry mm -hmm. and it has a lot to do with um, their teeth. Mm -hmm. um, dental um, and teeth cleaning is very important now in veterinary medicine. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the dogs have to come in once or twice a year to get their teeth scaled and get them polished just like we go to the veterinarian. Mm -hmm. Because we know a lot of times um, with, this, with the tartar and the buildup on the teeth, it can attribute to other diseases like liver problem and kidney problem. So the, um, the canned food, it just uh, accumulates on the teeth more. Mm -hmm. So once it's set there, it allows um, other things to build up. As opposed to the dry food, it's drier, it, you know, the dog swallow is better, and it can also help clean some of the teeth that they're eating. Okay. Yes. Great, great. You have another interesting case you're going to yes. show us about. We have some radiographs that we're going to show of some massive bladder stones. Um, you want to take us through that? Sure. 